I want to take a look at DC arc flash and in particular DC arc flash calculations and studies. As I mentioned, DC arc flash, there really is not a standard, an official standard for DC arc flash calculations yet. There are a couple of papers from 2007 and 2009 that are referenced within NFPA 70E. They're also referenced within IEEE 1584, but IEEE 1584 has not developed a standard yet for performing DC arc flash calculations. So I want to show you a little bit about what we have right now when it comes to DC. As we've talked about, we have the battery systems, rectifiers, photovoltaic systems, battery chargers, which are basically like a rectifier, and the DC power systems are increasing. This is a photovoltaic installation about two hours southwest of where I am in the Phoenix area. This is towards Yuma, Arizona. This is a 290 megawatt utility scale photovoltaic installation. If you want to know more about performing DC arc flash calculations, go out to my website, brainfiller.com, and then you go out to technical resources. There's a series of technical articles that you'll find. And scroll down through the articles, and I have one on DC arc flash calculations where I take you step by step through the process of performing DC arc flash calculations. I want to show you an example of a DC arc flash analysis. In this example, we have a 258 volt DC battery system. And the battery resistance has an 11.2 milliohm internal resistance, which you can obtain from testing. There is a conductor resistance of 2.59 milliohms. And then we want to know what would be the incident energy. And I'm showing two different examples here. Both are with an 18 inch working distance. The one on the lower left is based on a one second arc duration. And the result on the right is from a 0.1 second arc duration. And you can see the results. I'm calculating both for open air and from an enclosure because the technical papers that are used right now have both calculation methods available. And an arc flash in air would be like on, on battery terminals. The energy just goes in, in many, many directions. So there's a release of energy, but the person is only going to be hit with a certain part of it that's coming through air in their direction. Whereas if it's in an enclosure, it's going to be focused out of the enclosure and there'll be a lot more energy, which is why with the arc flash risk assessment, there is the question about whether or not the batteries are in an enclosure or not. Looking at the open air configuration, the incident energy is 10.14 calories per square centimeter with a one second duration. That's a long duration. And if it's in an enclosure, it pretty much doubles. It's 22.5 calories per square centimeter because all that energy is being focused out at the worker. It's a very substantial amount of energy. The reason it's such a, a large value is because of the duration. One second is a very long time when it comes to an arc flash. And the greater the duration, the greater the exposure. It's proportional. On the lower right, this is an example with a 0.1 second arc duration. And look at the difference. In an open air, the incident energy is slightly over one calorie a square centimeter. In an enclosure, it crosses that 1.2 calorie per square centimeter threshold to 2.25, but that's not nearly the exposure if you had a full one second. I really appreciate you taking the class on the fundamentals of DC electrical safety. I attempted to base this class on some of the better known information when it comes to DC and DC electrical safety. But as I think you may know by now, the DC side of things is not quite as mature as the AC side of things when it comes to electrical safety. It's gonna evolve, it's gonna improve. What we know about electrical safety has improved from the very early days of 1979, the first edition of NFPA 70E, and even prior to that. And so I see the same thing happening with DC. So the final step in this is to take the quiz. And upon achieving a passing score of 70%, then you can print your certificate for your continuing education credit. Now these modules are gonna be stored in your library. We call it the Brain Vault. Uh, basically, there, there's no expiration date. So if, if you have questions later on, it's like, huh, I think we talked about that. Let me go back and review it. You'll be able to. 
It's not like it's going to disappear in a couple of weeks or something like that. So it's, it's permanent. So uh, anyway, I appreciate you uh, taking part of the class and please be safe and thanks for watching.